Hi, my name is Thane. Uh, my wife Karen and I uh, came out to these woods uh, a couple of years ago, moved on to our property, and um, we had about 10 years before that uh, that we had a lot of time to think about um, what we were going to do with our forest and how we were going to use it for timber framing. I had about 10 years to learn, uh, get a little bit of experience, and collect as many tools as I could in getting ready for this. I read all the books that, that were available out there. Uh, one day, uh, Karen came home from the library with this book, which is uh, the, the one that made everything click for me. This is, a, uh, this is called Learn to Timber Frame by Will Beamer. And this made square rule make sense to me. And I, I, I recommend this book for anybody who's starting out in timber framing. So I also learned a lot on YouTube uh, and different YouTube channels. Uh, a couple that stand out in my mind are Samurai Carpenter. He, he goes by the Samurai Carpenter. Uh, he's a, a, a more of a fine woodworker, but uh, had a lot of timber framing ex experience also. So I learned a few tricks and tips from him. Uh, I learned from the Tradesman Channel uh, and the Great Plains Craftsmen were recently. Those guys were going through a similar thing that I'm doing, which is learning timber framing and doing it uh, brand new with very little experience to start with. So I watched them learn and, I helped, and it helped me learn through the process. Other uh, fun channels like the uh, Essential Craftsman uh, was very interesting to me, uh, learning from some old timers who've done just about everything. Anyway, um, so now what I'll do is I'm going to go through the tools uh, and just kind of identify each one of them. After that, uh, in the coming weeks, I will go ahead and um, <clears throat> I will do an individual video for, for some of the specialized tools. Uh, each one of them works, but I won't be very specific today because there's a lot of them and I'm just going to go through and make an overview of all of these. So with that, we'll get started. Starting right here, uh, this is a 16-inch Makita circular saw, uh, otherwise known as a beam saw, uh, for cutting uh, end cuts and cross cuts. This is a, here's a, a cordless uh, circular saw, handy for doing kerf cutting. Uh, this is a Makita chain mortiser, um, used for punching rectangular holes also known as mortises, and also doing uh, end mortises like this for joists, pockets. Um, very handy uh, tool. You'll find a lot of videos about the chain mortiser out there on YouTube. Um, <clears throat> in terms of hammers, uh, I like uh, using a, a large dead blow hammer for convincing beams to go where they need to go. This has got you know lead shot in it. This is a Stanley dead blow. Um, I also like this uh, mallet. It's a round mallet with lead shot in it for uh, using on a chisel. Very handy for chisel work. It's, a, it's easy on your wrist. This is a uh, rawhide hammer with a, a steel uh, cast iron uh, uh, head on it. So it's got some weight to it. And if you need to convince things like a, a, a pin or a peg, to go in. I, I just really like those that combination of those two. Um, behind me, uh, when you've finished a, 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 a cross cut, you need to finish a little bit more. It's handy to use a Japanese pull saw. This one has a uh, cross cut uh, and a rip side. Uh, I really love this saw. This is a an older est wing uh, that I restored an axe for hogging out material uh, to get down to like a, a curved surface or, or or just getting rid of a lot of material very quickly. Speaking of axes, uh, one of the channels that I forgot to mention, which I've learned a lot from, uh, he does very short videos and he doesn't talk a lot, 
but if you go to uh, a channel called Timber Doodles, uh, he, he does some great work. He's up in the Northeast. He does a lot of timber framing videos. I've learned a lot from Timber Doodles. I use several different squares. In particular, I use the two different color of squares uh, to figure out whether or not I've got a twist in a beam. Um, I don't use squares very much for layout. I like this uh, square over here, we'll get to that. Um, so some smaller squares and a combination square. Um, and so we'll move over a little bit. Coming to the middle here, uh, back in the back here, uh, I like to say that a, a, a tool is either sharp or it's useless. Um, the, and that's true. A, 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 a tool that has an edge on it is basically just an aggravation if it's not sharp. So, uh, and, and I think people should learn to, to sharpen their tools almost daily if they're using them daily. Uh, I have a nice set of Kingstone whetstones from Japan, um, as well as some other Japanese whetstones. Um, just learning to sharpen tools is a fundamental that you have to do. Um, this is a slick, uh, another edge surface here. Um, very handy for uh, paring out uh, uh, tenons and, and things of that nature. In the front here, I've got several hand tools uh, for, for paring down uh, tenon cheeks and, um, and housing uh, reductions. Uh, these uh, regular block plane, this is actually a sergeant uh, rabbiting plane. The, I've, I've restored some of these tools and some of them are very old. Uh, but uh, they still work very well. This is a Stanley 10 and a half uh, rabbiting plane I'm doing similar things. A uh, spoke shave for doing uh, fine work on curved surfaces and, and short surfaces. Uh, this is a inch and a half chisel. I find that this is probably the only chisel that I use most of the time. This, this one is uh, a bar chisel um, made here in the US currently, and a draw knife can be very handy. A lot of these uh, tools, um, uh, different tools can be used for the same exact type of job, it just depends on how you like to use them. Like a draw knife doesn't come in that handy in a lot of uh, timber framing, but I like to use it in a few cases because it helps me. <coughs> I, a corner chisel doesn't help me very much. I find that uh, a regular chisel going 90 degrees works just as well and gets the job done. I haven't really found a great use for a corner chisel, but I have one. Now we will go ahead and move over behind some of these power tools. And some of the most useful layout tools that I have are uh, these measuring tools here. This is a tape measure that is a flat tape measure so it's kind of wobbly but you are able to set it flat on a beam uh, and, and lock it down on one end with a clamp and it's got a zero mark a, a lead-in uh, of 10 inches before you get to your zero mark so that you can do uh, offset from from a particular reference point uh, like uh, the the shoulder before a tenon um, and use those as your, your reference marks this is a very handy uh, tape measure um, I'll, I'm gonna I'll do a video just on tape measures probably um, the same manufacturer makes this uh, tape measure as well, which uh, has very clearly marked uh, down to sixteenths, and it's readable from both sides. I really like this one. The probably most useful tool for layout that I have is this timber framing square that is a, re a redesign of, of a a square that was made called the Big Al, uh, which had, uh, uh, it was a little simpler than this because it, uh, this one has uh, made out of stainless steel and it's laser etched on the stainless, very heavy duty uh, square. It's got an anodized aluminum uh, fence on it. Uh, and I'll do a whole video just on this square um, because it's just really handy. Uh, for This is actually, this redo of it is, is made by uh, Timberframe HQ uh, at TimberframeHQ.com um, <clears throat> Other layout or uh, uh, tools for, for doing joinery 
uh, is having like a tenon gauge. I made this out of maple and uh, made it to where I have an inch and a half gauge and a two inch gauge. Using that in combination with a tongue on a, on a regular carpenter square, uh, I've been very uh, happy with the results of my tenon fitting my mortises just the way they ought to. Uh, a good uh, handy cordless drill for doing uh, small work that it, like uh, drilling um, peg holes in tenons is handy. This is the Makita 12 and a quarter inch planer. Uh, using a planer on your beams before you do any of your work makes the whole job a lot more pleasant. <clears throat> You can get uh, your layout uh, lines a little sharper, a little closer. Uh, you can uh, cut your beam down to the dimensions the, exactly the way you want them in 30 seconds or less with that. This is a hollow chisel mortiser made by Makita. Not very many of these are around in the U.S. This is actually a 115 volt U.S. version and uh, it has a 30 millimeter square uh, chisel mortiser on it that punches down square holes uh, for mortising. This is <clears throat> this is one of the <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of proud uh, about this uh, drill press because I made it from a couple of 1960s craftsman uh, pieces. This was a drill press stand uh, and gear to, for for uh, dropping a into this drill press base, but I spun it around, mounted it on a maple base, and put a three-quarter inch of this uh, drill of the same era of this craftsman, a real low RPM, uh, heavy-duty three-quarter inch drill, so that I can drop in an 18-inch uh, bit uh, right straight down through a beam. Uh, when you're doing cleanup, it's very handy to have a blower around it like this. I have this two-stroke blower that I just fire up real quick and blow out my mortises saves a lot of playing around with chips and, and, and shavings. <clears throat> Next up here uh, for beam handling uh, is I made this dolly out of, uh, I call it a beam dolly. Uh, with, I made this from a garden cart that had the, gar the axle for the garden cart and the wheels on it. And so I just made this uh, piece here. You can uh, balance a beam on it and walk around with it with one finger if you want. <clears throat> In front of it is the anchor seal, uh, which is for sealing the end grain on your beams after you do a, a fresh cut on them. Um, you want to seal up the ends of your end grain and make sure that they don't check out because your, your moisture gets out there faster and you don't want your, your end grain to, to dry faster than the rest of the beam. Even if you have checking on the end of a beam that you forgot to seal up, you can still put the uh, anchor seal on it and the moisture will migrate out to the end of the beam and swell up and seal those checks. If there are any questions about any of these tools I'll see what I can do about answering those down in the question in the comments below. Uh, if you want to go ahead and subscribe to my channel I will go ahead and make videos in the coming weeks on each one of these uh, pieces of equipment and tools uh, where, where I find that I can uh, be of service to you and give you some kind of new information. Not a lot of new, new information, but I like pulling information together that I've learned from a lot of different sources on any particular tool and how it works. So thank you very much and have a good day.